Welcome back. My name is Lawrence. Today it's not going to be a regular video of stories behind the stamps, but I'm going to give them the reflections of the latest exhibition in Hungary. Bear with me in this episode of The exhib exhibition took place in Budapest, Hungary from the 31st of March to the 3rd of April this year, 2022. It was actually held in a, in a football uh, stadium, actually in the arena of the football stadium. And there were exhibitions, there were exhibits there from all over the world. 11 p.m. and I've arrived at the hotel, finally. <clears throat> Tomorrow's gonna be a long day. I'm gonna be at the, at the exhibition ready from 10 o'clock. And there's a few people who are visiting exhibitions that I've already seen, somebody from Australia and somebody from India. And I'll continue tomorrow. Well, walking around in, in Budapest, walking to the exhibition a little bit, I can actually say it's very, very cold. It's three degrees. And well, I'm not used to this kind of weather. See you soon. When we entered the arena, uh, we were told to wait in line to pay to pay to get in i didn't understand why we had to pay to get in because uh, normally i don't we don't pay but when i got to the end of the line about 20 minutes later uh, that i was told because i was an exhibitor i didn't have to pay so i got a ticket that i didn't have to pay or a, neck, a necklace so now we go upstairs and here we can see a view of all the frames in one section and uh, here's a few people looking at the frames now the problem here was that there were no, not many um, dealers, not many dealers. So they were not regular visitors. There were only visitors there who basically collect stamps or exhibitors and their families, which is okay because you can see you can see that there were visitors in in essence. Sunday actually was a very very busy day, and so was Saturday. There were many many people who came. And that's also quite obvious because it's not a, not working days, it was the weekend. Now before we continue, it's important to, have to know a little bit about the exhibition, exhibition classes. And I'll let my little friend tell you now. Postal history. Traditional. Thematics. One frame. Up and coming open class and postcards. And yes, there are others. We will give a brief description of some of these. We are going to simplify the issues for the non-exhibitor. Postal history is the study of postal systems and how they operated and is made up mainly of covers. Amongst others, it is the study of how a letter went from a to B and the rates used. Traditional is the study of a particular stamp or series or period. An example would be a study of the 1840 penny black stamp. Thematic class is the class that I exhibit in and the main emphasis here. The exhibit tells a story and the items used are taken from all areas including traditional, postal history, postal stationery, and others. Now you have to realize that uh, for me personally, exhibiting is an exhilarating experience. I take a page and I prepare it on the computer, then I print it on special paper, and then I cut it out to, if I have to window an item, and finally I put the, put the items in, and then I put them in the, in the, in the protective package itself. And then, now we can see it's on the exhibit frame. Let's check into that particular picture, and there we have it. Now here I am, on the, here I am waiting silently for the results. Now this is after months and months and months of preparation. The class I exhibit in is thematics. And in my personal exhibit, I tell a story. I tell the story about, from my point of view, the Jewish homeland and our continued struggle for survival. And we were waiting eagerly for the results and the results were only published on Saturday. In other words, I had Thursday and Friday of biting nails. And I was awarded with this prize, which is a gold medal, 30, 93 points, with a special prize for the way of treatment, which is the way I handled the material. A good friend of mine, a very, very good friend of mine, and here he is, Joram Leo Benaiker. He collects chess. Now it's not exactly chess. I want to, to, to call it chess would be an insult. He does a comparison between chess and war. He actually calls chess the game of war. 
Now, for the first time in his, in his exhibiting career, my friend Joram got a large gold. Very, very well deserved. I'm very, very happy for him. And here you can see and the, the, his, his title page. And I'm going to show you a few items along the way from his exhibit. His exhibit. This exhibit is from a very good friend of mine, Joram, and he got a large gulp with felicitations. A very, very good result indeed. Now, what his exhibit is all about, he takes a chess and equates it with war. Okay? Now, here we have some examples. I'll just show you some. Um, <clears throat> let's see, where should we go? Okay. And how, how it all began, how it all began. Yeah. Start, it starts off. Uh, the sides line up. Sorry, the sides line up. So here we have, here we have uh, the foot soldier armed with the spear. Sorry, foot soldier armed with the spear, and on many times a little rifle. And in chess, the foot soldier is is a pawn. The pawn. Now that's a, nice, a very very nice item. But you can also say things like Saint George who fought the dragon on a horse. And the chess equivalent to the horse is a knight. Very, very nice piece uh, from a very, very nice piece. You can see the chess. In thematics, we very often like to use errors. Uh, actually, it's quite expected. And the nice thing about it is when you can take an error and use it thematically. Okay? Here we see a nice example of when the perforation is through the head of the person. It's one of, the, one of this gentleman right here, so we've got a large gold is well deserved. A splitting headache. One thing that many of us try to do is we try to implement a Mulready. Now Mulready have many, many adverts on them. This advert is from William Hallett and it's, now, it's only 11 postal used copies. And this is the advert that we're referring to. I have the same kind of idea in my exhibit. I don't need to do the whole thing. I'm talking about this advert here, which basically says our, our Israeli origins, lectures on ancient Israel. Okay, let's do a close in. Okay, and you can see what I'm referring to. Okay. And here in an exhibit about chess, we have a letter sent by a soldier of Napoleon's occupation army of Germany from Bohemia, 1809. Lovely item, lovely. Let me take you through the exhibit and I'll show you what, I'm, what I've uploaded from my camera and please forgive me of the quality, I'm not an expert video taker but uh, this is the best I could do. Now this item is a very good friend of mine, Daryl Kibble from Australia. He got a large gold again, he got the same thing in London. The message behind the angel story. Now his plan here outlines it and as you can see here, A-N-G-E-L for the angel. It's very, very nice. And here, and once again, we see a, a kind of study there. Very, very nice items. Very, very impressive. One nice thing that they have, and I'm going to pause it for a moment, is the Hindenburg crash, which he paid for at about $7,000. Now, you might be thinking, what is this? What is, he's referring to it because of this stamp. Paul, you called Hermes because he's a cheap speaker. Now, in thematics, uh, you can use it on a cover, but it's a regular stamp but here he's using on a crash cover in this condition and this item no one will question something like that it's beautiful here we have another gold gold exhibit a uh, hunting necessity sport or a combat extermination uh, it got a gold as you can see <clears throat> and here they have a nice item uh, an egyptian artwork but Egyptian artworks like this are very questionable. I have one, but this person has one there, and he has, or she, I don't know which one, another one there, and in some place, another, another. This item here about the queen of plants, the palm, got a large gold for the first time, as you can see. And look at the quality of this poster, of this item here. Okay. And what you see here is called a study. They took one, one specific item and developed it throughout the page. As you can see, I have the same in my exhibit. Same kind of development. Now this is lovely. Uh, it's basically called 
strange letters, uh, strange letters and postage stamps works against, works art against philatelophobia. Now, he got a large silver. I don't believe the way he's done it, he'll ever get more than that. But for the, for the beginning collector, look at how beautiful it is. Look at this. And I like the one up here, the pig one. Look how lovely his, his uh, presentation is and everything about it. Um, it's written one of the languages that are valid for, for FIP. It's written in German. And it's simply, it's simply a delight to look at. Oh, a true delight. And I, as I said, I don't think he's going to get more than that. But to, for someone who wants to start a collection, I like it. It's like the, the Austrian innovation in which they've now brought up one with a plaster. And it's, uh, it's a, of course, it's a gimmick, but it's a nice gimmick to start collecting. Well, this is my exhibit, yeah. and as you can see, I got a, I got a gold, 93 points, and a special prize. I don't know what the special prize is for, but uh, if once you get a special prize, it means that you're one step, uh, one step below. Okay. Um, to anyone who doesn't understand, I'll explain to you my own concept. Okay, my concept means that I describe the Jewish homeland, and this little boy by the name of David. And he goes to school, and at school he's taught, he's taught about uh, uh, the history and his culture and everything. When he goes home, he then asks his family all kinds of questions. As an example, here, he says, Boba, which is basically a Yiddish word for grandmother, and in this case it's a great-grandmother, what is the number in your arm? And in this case, she tells him all about the Holocaust. And here we see some items from the Holocaust. One of the, one of the, one of the uh, reasons for the, Hol for the um, rise of the Nazi party was the Versailles Convention. Not the reason, but one of them. And at the end of the story, she tells him all about that, at the end of the story, basically, young David gets his answer. And here we see, the, here we see an item which says, the, the tattoo on the arm is not to remind me, but to remind you. And shows an adult yeah. into the hand of a baby. Well, thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure. Until the next video, bye.